Welcome to the News Hub, Rough Dards, Stanmerzo Dapen Nopern, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights, and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. China dreams of building its own large passenger airplanes, challenging Boeing and Airbus. The C919 jet, led by Comac, is a symbol of this ambition. Its first flight was a milestone, but the jet relies on foreign engines and avionics. This dependence on Western technology is a vulnerability. The C919 became a point of national pride, and a test of China's quest for technological independence. The dream is in the air, but challenges remain. The US-China rivalry escalated and Washington grew alarmed by China's technological rise. In 2023, the US imposed strict export controls targeting China's aviation industry, putting the C919 directly in the crosshairs. The sanctions hit hardest where China was weakest. The engines and critical systems many made by American and European companies. Without access to these parts, COMAX production lines slowed and deliveries to airlines were delayed. The message from Washington was clear. The US would not help China build a rival aerospace industry. The sanctions also targeted flight controls, landing gear, and other essential systems. The C-919's future was suddenly uncertain. For China, this was more than a business setback, it was a blow to national pride and sovereignty. The crisis forced Beijing to rethink its strategy. Relying on the West for key technology was no longer an option. The US wall of sanctions was designed to halt China's progress and test its resilience. China saw the sanctions as an attempt to keep it down. The government was furious, accusing the US of unfairly targeting its most promising project. The C919 program became a symbol of the broader struggle for technological independence. China now faced a stark choice, innovate or be left behind. The crisis was a wake-up call for Beijing. The next move would define the future of China's aviation ambitions. The battle lines were drawn. China had to fight back. As the US tightened tech exports, China prepared its own economic weapon rare earth elements. These 17 metals are essential for modern technology, from smartphones to fighter jets. China controls over 60% of global mining and up to 90% of processing, giving it enormous leverage. Even rare earths mined elsewhere often end up in China for refining. These elements are crucial for high-performance magnets, electronics, and defense systems. The US and its allies depend on Chinese rare earths for everything from missiles to electric cars. China's dominance is a strategic asset built over decades as other countries avoided the environmental costs. The Pentagon and Silicon Valley both rely on these invisible materials. As the US used sanctions, China saw its rare earth monopoly as the perfect tool for retaliation. The world's most advanced technologies depend on a supply chain that runs through China. The stage was set for a new kind of economic warfare. In response to US sanctions, China moved quickly to show its own power. In late 2023, Beijing announced new export controls on rare earth materials, requiring special licenses for overseas sales. The message was clear, China could restrict vital minerals to countries targeting its industries. This sent shockwaves through Western capitals, reviving memories of China's 2010 export ban on Japan. By late 2024, China hinted it might target U.S. aerospace and defense companies directly. If the U.S. blocked engine parts, China could block materials for American jets and missiles. China framed its actions as a response to American aggression, not an escalation. The U.S. faced a dilemma, its economy and military depended on Chinese, rare, earths. A full ban could disrupt everything from smartphones to military equipment. But China was careful, not wanting to destroy its own market or push customers to find alternatives too quickly. Instead, Beijing used the threat of a ban to create uncertainty and fear. The rare earth card became a powerful bargaining chip in high-stakes negotiations. China's move was calculated pressure the US without triggering a total rupture. The world watched as the two giants tested each other's resolve. The rare earth threat was real, but so was the risk of overplaying it. The balance of power was shifting. The next move could change the global economy. Most people have never heard of rare earths like neodymium or terbium, yet they're everywhere. These elements power the magnets in your phone, the colors in your screen, and the sound in your headphones. They're essential for lightweight, powerful devices and long battery life. 
Rare earths are also critical for medical tech, like MRI machines, and for green energy. Electric cars and wind turbines rely on rare earth magnets for efficiency and power. A single wind turbine can contain hundreds of kilograms of these materials. As the world shifts to clean energy, demand for rare earths is soaring. China's control over the market means any disruption would be felt worldwide, prices for consumer goods could rise, and the green transition could slow. The C919 fight was about more than jets, it exposed a hidden dependency in our daily lives. Rare earths are the invisible backbone of modern technology. The world's reliance on them is now impossible to ignore. The stakes are higher than ever. The threat of a Chinese rare earth ban jolted the world awake. The C919 crisis made clear the danger of relying on a single supplier for critical minerals. The US, Europe and Japan scrambled to find alternatives, launching a global race for new sources. The US revived the Mountain Pass mine in California and partnered with Australia to build secure supply chains. Australia's Linus expanded operations and the EU launched its own critical mineral strategy. Even countries like Pakistan began exploring rare earth exports to the West. Rebuilding the industry would take years and billions of dollars. China had a huge head start. Competing on cost and scale would be tough, especially with strict environmental laws in the West. The scramble was necessary, but the path was long and uncertain. The world was learning just how hard it is to break free from China's grip. The rare earth race had begun. The outcome would shape the future of technology and security. U.S. sanctions on the C919's engines were a painful blow but they fueled China's drive for independence. Beijing accelerated its push to develop a homegrown jet engine, the CJ-1000A. Building a modern engine is one of the toughest engineering feats, requiring advanced materials and precision manufacturing. Early tests revealed setbacks, but China pressed on, pouring resources into the project. The C919 program continued using stockpiled Western parts, buying time for engineers to perfect the domestic engine. This quest is part of China's dual circulation strategy, strengthen the domestic economy while engaging globally on its own terms. The C919 and CJ-1000A are at the heart of this plan. By mastering engine technology, China aims to break its last chain of dependency. The goal, complete technological sovereignty. The journey is difficult, but the stakes are national survival. China is determined to ensure no foreign power can ground its ambitions again. The race for self-reliance is on. The world is watching. As the trade war over jets and minerals intensified, both China and the US felt the pain. Economic instability forced both sides to the negotiating table in early 2025. Talks in Geneva aimed to de-escalate the conflict, the U.S. demanded guaranteed rare earth exports. China wanted sanctions on the C919 lifted. A temporary truce was discussed. China would resume exports, and the U.S. would pause some restrictions. But deep distrust quickly unraveled the deal. The U.S. expanded sanctions on other Chinese tech firms. China accused Washington of bad faith. The brief hope for compromise vanished, replaced by renewed escalation. The failed talks revealed the depth of the divide. This was about more than trade. It was a battle over technology and global influence. As of late 2025, some export controls remain, and China's rare earth threat is still on the table. The standoff continues, with both sides holding powerful cards. The world supply chains hang in the balance. The chess match is far from over. The C919 and rare earth battles have reshaped US-China relations, exposing deep vulnerabilities. The crisis has cooled, but the underlying conflict remains. COMAX C919 flies mainly in China, still reliant on Western parts but racing to integrate domestic alternatives. The US and allies are building new rare earth supply chains but it will take years. China is doubling down on self-sufficiency, determined to shield its tech sector from foreign pressure. The future will see targeted sanctions, export controls, and tense negotiations, not open economic war. The C919 will remain a flashpoint, especially if China pushes it abroad with a Chinese engine. Any move to restrict rare earths could trigger a global crisis. The story of the C919 is a preview of 21st century challenges economic competition, national security, and fractured globalization.
The world is entering a new era of rivalry and uncertainty. The balance between cooperation and conflict will define the future of global technology and trade.